The Iliad and the Odyssey, Act 6, by Rosemary Sutcliffe. And here are our new vocabulary words. Host is a large number or great multitude. That means lots of things, lots of people. Siege, surround and attack a fortified place. Skirmish is a short fight during a war. Spoils are stolen goods that are taken mostly during a war from the losing side. Ransom is a payment for return of a captive. A trench is a deep ditch. Site, a place or location. Fringe is along the edge or boundary. Scale, attack by climbing ladders. That's a good homophone word. Scale can also be what you get on to see how much you weigh. Storm, sudden violent attack. Again, homophone because we know about storms like thunderstorms and hurricanes. Plunder, things stolen by force. A chariot is a war cart pulled by horses. An ally is a friendly nation. And turf is dirt held together by roots. The Greeks did not have smooth sailing. Storms beat them this way and that, and more than once they met with enemy fleets and had to fight them off. But at long last, they came in sight of the coast below the city of Troy. Then they made a race of it with the rowers quickening their oar sweeps, thrusting their ships through the water, each eager to come first to land. The race was won by the vessel of Prince Talisaus, but as the prince sprang ashore, an arrow from among the defenders hit him in the throat and he dropped dead just above the tide line, the first man to die in the long war for Troy. The rest followed him and quickly drove back the Trojan warriors who were ill prepared for so great an enemy war host. When that day's sun went down, the Greeks were masters of the coastal dunes, reed beds, and rough grass that fringed the great plain of Troy. They beached their ships and built halls and huts on the site to live in, so that in a while there was something like a seaport town. And in that town of turf and timber, they lived while year after year, the war went on. Nine times the wild almonds flowered and fruited on the rocky slopes below the city. Nine times the summer heat had dried out the tamarisk shrub among the grave mounds of long dead kings. The ship's timber rotted and the high fierce hopes that the Greeks had brought with them grew weary and dull-edged. The Greeks knew little of siege warfare. They did not dig trenches around the city nor keep watch on the roads by which supplies and fighting men of allied countries might come in, nor did they try to break down the gates or scale the high walls. The Trojans, ruled by an old king and a council of old men, remained for the most part within their city walls or came out to skirmish only a little way outside them though Hector, their war leader and foremost among the king's sons, would have attacked and stormed the Greek camp if he had had his way. But there were other lesser cities along the coast that were easier prey, and the men of the black ships raided these and took cattle for food and horses for chariots and took the fairest of the women for slaves. On one of these raids far down the coast when the almond trees were coming into flower for the tenth time, they captured and brought back two beautiful maidens, Chryseus and Briseis, among the spoils of war. Chryseis was given to Agamemnon, who was as high king, always received the richest of the plunder, while Briseis was awarded to Achilles, who had led the raid. Chryseus's father, who was a priest of Apollo, came to the Greek camp begging for his daughter back again and offering much gold for her ransom. But Agamemnon refused and bade the old man be gone with cruel insults, and there it seemed the thing was ended. Just a little reminder, remember Apollo was the sun god, 
he drove his son chariot across the sky. And this is the end of act number six.